I don't know about you, but I've always found games like Pilot Wings to be incredibly relaxing. There's just something about flying through the air on a sunny day with scenic beaches below that helps me forget about the everyday dramas and stress of the real world. That's basically what I expected going into Ultra Wings, the brand new flight simulator from Bit Planet Games. I expected to climb into the cockpit and spend a relaxing day soaring over tropical islands. But turbulence in the form of user interface issues and rampant technical bugs sent my plane crashing to the ground. Buckle up, this is gonna be a bumpy ride. Ultra Wings is an open world flying game where you pick up jobs, earn money, and buy new airfields. Along the way, you'll pick up new planes and unlock a bunch of new jobs, where you can earn even more money and conquer the world. Okay, maybe it's not that dramatic. But the pieces are all there for a fun and casual flight sim with more than a passing resemblance to pilot wings. The open world is made up of a series of islands that are surrounded by a large volcano. We initially start out with an ultralight plane and only a handful of jobs, but that'll be enough to fly to the next island and unlock a new set of challenges. The events will take you through cities, past giant statues, over farmland, through rocky cliffs, and up to the top of that volcano we were just talking about. Each island has a slightly different flavor, and I was excited to earn enough money to unlock the next airport and fully explore the new locations. What's nice is that the planes all feel dramatically different from one another. Like I said, we start out with that ultralight, but quickly move on to the Glidester, which let me tell you, has its own learning curve. Instead of just keeping the propeller going, the Glidester gains speed when you push that boost button. That's it. You just glide around the islands until you either land or boost, which requires its own set of skills. And then there's the G-Racer, which may be fast, but it sure is hard to see anything out of that cockpit. The different events are also diverse, but maybe not as interesting. A lot of the jobs come down to flying through a series of rings in the air, or shooting down balloons, and sometimes both at the same time. Other events will award you money for landing in weird locations and taking pictures of points of interest. There are also nail-biting scenarios that you'll need to complete, like running out of fuel and having to make it to the landing strip without crashing into the ground. There are different jobs for each type of plane, which makes for a lot of content. This is not the kind of game you beat in a single sitting, and Probably not even a weekend. There's a lot here. Now, one thing I didn't realize going into Ultra Wings is that it started its life as a virtual reality game. In fact, I'm pretty sure that every other version of this game outside of the Switch edition that I played has some sort of VR support. This surprised me at first, since so much of the user interface is based around head tracking and pointing at the thing you want to interact with. This is fine, albeit annoying, when cycling through the jobs and trying to buy a new plane, but hard to deal with once you're actually in the cockpit and flying over the ocean. Suddenly the game wants you to do things that would be easy in VR, but with a controller. And the results aren't especially good. A great example of this is when you're trying to fly the plane while shooting at balloons. The problem is that you can't do both things at once, so the game wants you to switch between flying the airplane and moving your head around. The Switch version tries to split the difference by allowing you to use the controller's gyro functionality, but it pales in comparison to real head tracking in VR. This is the kind of mini game that I have to imagine is a whole lot of fun in virtual reality, but on the Switch, these modes can be a real nightmare. It also forces you to play in the first person view, which I found to be incredibly annoying when trying to do the G-Racer jobs. If you're wondering why I don't switch to the third person view, it's because Ultra Wings is broken. There's this annoying bug that prevents you from moving your head around once you've switched from the default first person view to the easier third person. Since you have to use the in-game cell phone to exit each job, you'll need to switch back into the first person mode when you land. But this means that you can't move your head because the game thinks you're done playing. You're just stuck there, paralyzed to the seat staring straight forward. You can't even pause the game or restart. It's like half the controller turned off for no reason. You just have to restart the game and try the job all over again. This time, remembering to never, ever switch to the third person view. But even if it did work properly, the different camera perspectives simply don't give you the details you need. For example, you can't use the cell phone in the third person. At all. 
And that's a big deal because you can't see what your objective is. How many balloons you need to pop, how much time you have left, or how many points you earn from hitting that bullseye. It ends up being a situation where you're basically forced to play the game from the first person perspective, whether you like it or not. I mean, there are just times when seeing the whole plane would make a lot more sense, like landing jobs and flying through hoops, but the game seems to go out of its way to lock you into the cockpit. Again, that may be fine if you have a VR helmet strapped to your head, but let me tell you, it made it really hard to play it on the Switch. Another thing that makes it hard to play is the unstable frame rate. There are times when everything runs smoothly, but I ran into an extended session where the frame rate dipped down into the single digits. This not only made the game incredibly hard to play, but also impossible to look at for long stretches of time. It got to the point where it was starting to make me feel a bit nauseous. I mean, I know that airplanes usually have barf bags, but I don't want to have to use one when I'm playing a video game. Now, it's worth noting that the developers have indicated that they are aware of this problem and plan on fixing it in the future. The depressing thing is that Ultra Wings has a lot of the pieces to make a great flight simulator. There's a ton of content, diverse islands to explore, colorful graphics, and planes that all feel radically different. But with so many technical problems and UI quirks, guys, I'm having a real hard time recommending this version. I mean, it could be that this game is amazing in VR and incredibly fun on the PC and PlayStation 4. But let me tell you, you're in for a bumpy ride when it comes to the Switch. Ultra Wings is another example of a virtual reality game getting ported to a system without a VR helmet. The result is a good looking game with tons of content that is dogged by game breaking technical problems and a user interface that clearly wasn't created with the Switch in mind. There's fun to be had here, but you may want to wait until BitPlanet Games has issued a patch or two. And even then, you may want to opt for one of the VR versions. Or just go back to playing Pilot Wings. That's what I'm gonna do. Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. Now here's the question I have for you. What's your favorite flying game? And yes, I'll count nights into dreams. And pretty much every shoot em up. Huh, yeah, I guess this question is a lot broader than I expected. Let me see your picks in the comments below. In other news, we'll be back later today, that's right today, with a brand new review of Progress Bar Simulator. Yes, that's a real game. And then we're finally going to get to the Game Over episode on Wednesday and a wrestling quiz on Friday. We've got a packed week ahead of us, so I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.